What's up, everybody? This is Zach, aka Zachy, aka I am Zachy, creator of Jedi Radio, Zach Love Coffee, and many more podcasts and websites. Um, so, just got a haircut. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit more presentable than before. Uh, it pretty much looked, uh, my hair was all over the place before, and now it's uh, a little bit more presentable. It's not colored yet, so kind of have the uh, Clooney look until I get it colored. A um, couple of things. I've been writing more blog entries. I'm now on to blog post number 1030, 1030. And I'm um, just currently writing that blog post and I'm um, just working on that. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, turn that in uh, later. Not, not sure when. I'll just be working on it furiously and, and uh, get that done. Um, let's begin with Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk 27. Today is Tuesday, December 5th. Big day for the Cyberpunk 2077 community. The patch 2.1 has been released and the Ultimate Edition just came out on PS5 and Xbox. Um, I think PC as well, which has the um, entire game, the 2.0 patch and the um, uh, Phantom Liberty DLC. So this is a great way for all of you guys who have yet to embark on this journey for Cyberpunk 2077 to immediately, as soon as you get a PS5 or an Xbox for the holidays, for Christmas, get that fucking game, turn it on, and, and just enjoy this amazing, beautiful world of uh, just amazement. And um, yeah, I know that's not a word, but uh, I just, I need you guys to, to jump in there and just see how amazing this world is and how we have just basically we, we have just scratched the surface with this thing, you know. A couple years ago, this, this game was full of glitches, full of uh, bad nuances, and now it's, it's definitely definitely playable. It works great. There's a bunch of new addition to the 2.1 patch, and uh, this is just a glimpse of where we're, this game is going. I just imagine when uh, the sequel, Cyberpunk 2072, comes out, which will be built on the Unreal Engine 5. It's just going to look be absolutely beautiful and the next point of that is definitely uh my the work that i'm working on is uh to create this whole thing into a goddamn metaverse because if we turn this thing to a metaverse it's multiplayer it's co-op you know everyone can uh, meet in the game you know essentially kind of a cosplay but online and just you know share it with themselves what they want to look like in that world you know, hang out, do missions together, you know, you know, whether it's to have meals together and to, you know, in some of the part of the towns or just to hang out some of the parts of the towns, to go to the, to the nightclub, to go to, um, races, uh, car races, to listen to music, to, uh, you know, there's going to be just a lot of activities. And, uh, that's, uh, that's like the, the major, not just, um, two or five or the 10 year plan of a cyberpunk 2016 is there's cd project red does a lot of work to do this project orion you know the code name for the sequel you know which will be turned into a full trilogy and after that then you know you know it's not sky's the limit it's the the pretty much above and beyond the whole damn universe is the limit is there's just so much that they can do with this franchise it's going to be absolutely amazing there's really a lot of great things happening for this game. So, um, as far as for me, I'm still doing as the cyberpunk character and DJ, who's been, uh, you know, using all my podcasts for eight years and uh, has been used as an influence as, and uh, for this uh, game series. I'm, I'm continuing to doing my cyberpunk radio show, and uh, I have a couple of episodes now. I think we're on episode 12 that I'm working on. Uh, obviously, they're all available on Spotify. And um, as far as the patch goes, 2.1, a couple of things you can do with it is the metro station. So I know, especially all of my friends and uh, fans in Europe, you know, they don't really get on the road all the time. They don't always drive around and that's not what they like to do. They like to take the metro. They go from metro station to another. So in this game now, you can um, bounce around from everywhere around the map of Cyberpunk 26 and, and um, go to multiple uh, train stations and just use the metro and you know, while you're in the metro it's just like uh, what you expected it to be in this and it's just there it is 
Uh, you can also invite your love interest to spend some time together at any of the apartments. Uh, hangouts are repeatable and limited events and become available once you, the romance passes and given character has been concluded. So this is very cool. Everyone, I've been looking for that uh, feature and uh, there it is. It's going to be in the 2.1 patch. My feature that I've been looking for the most is now implemented a little music player. So now you can listen to the music while walking on foot or while riding the metro. So that means you don't have to get into a vehicle to listen to any of the radio stations inside Cyberpunk. You can just walk around and you have a little music player and you can listen to any of the music while you're just walking around. Um, you can... Uh, all the car races events that were in, in, uh, in Cyberpunk 27 are now re -hatted. so now you can play them uh, multiple times as, as much as you want. The, there's also some sightseeing binoculars, which lets you look at appreciate all of uh, Cyberpunk's uh, nightlife, I mean, uh, all of Cyberpunk's um, night city visuals and uh, vistas and, and all that. And a uh, very cool feature, the accessibility feature have been added into Cyberpunk 2077. This is for the people that are that deal with the accessibility issues, or you know, who, people that are like colorblind or things of that nature, who have a trouble, you know, with a, a particular joystick or multiple hands. And the accessibility feature will let them still enjoy the full features of Cyberpunk, and I'm sure they're going to be very happy. So, for more details on uh, everything that's included in the 2.1 patch, I'll include the link below on this YouTube video so you can check out uh, everything else that's going on uh, with this game. All right, moving on, uh, some Deuce Ex 3 rumors. Uh, everyone's waiting, still no new words. Um, everyone, including the voice actors for the game, is are waiting impatiently for an announcement. Uh, I, uh, we know that they're working on a sequel in the trilogy of Adam Jensen. Uh, no new words on what's going on. Everyone is waiting for the next steps. Um, the launch date where the time window is like as far as like 2027, which is far away. And uh, unfortunately, we're only in 2023, almost 2024. People want to see a trailer. We want to see kind of a glimpse of, of where the series is going. Everyone who played um, Human Revolution and Mankind Divided knew that they left Mankind Divided on a cliffhanger and they expected to play this continuation on that. Everyone wants to know what happens next. We wanna, we wanna return to these characters. We wanna deal and fight the Illuminatis, and we we wanna we wanna do this. So, hopefully, um, uh, everyone that owns the franchise now, please give us a hint. Give us some, give us an artic article. Give us something. We wanna know what's what happens next. We're 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 waiting. Um, for Christmas, I was eager to play this new game called. The Man Who Erased His Name, which is a uh, part of the uh, Ninja Gaiden uh, something, Ninja Gaiden, and uh, and um, I basically wanted to play this, and uh, fans of that series basically looked at me and said, oh, you want to play The Man Who Erased His Name? Come sit down over here. This game has been in the series for over 10, 20 years. How long? Yeah, so over 10 years, so over 20 years. But um, as part of the Yakuza game series from Japan, and um, there's so many game entries. There's actually eight to nine entries into this video game series. So essentially, if I want to fully enjoy this entire series, I have to go back to the very first one, which is Yakuza 0, So, which is the first one before the, the beginning of the Yakuza series. And uh, very excited to jump on this franchise. You know, it's... it's uh, I saw I saw what was uh, going on into the trailers, and as someone who adore Japanese culture and, and all of that, I just I just needed something in there, you know. Especially since uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid uh, Volume One was not um, available in Japanese audio with Japanese with the English subtitles, I was just very frustrated, and you know, I needed a game where I can just enjoy myself and uh, enjoy, you know. A storyline, a plot that's in Japanese, audio, and English subtitles. I cannot wait to do that. I've been wanting to do that. I get to do that now with all of the games in the Yakuza series. I'm very excited. Thank you very much to Sony and PlayStation for making that happen. Um, Watchdog Legion. Oh my God, it's getting crazy. I can't believe I've been waiting to finish the, the main stories. I've been doing a lot of side missions. I finished the DLC. 
but uh, basically a lot of fans were telling me you've got to play the, the original story there's, there's a lot of craziness happening there's a lot of plot twists things that you don't expect and um, once you hear more about the whereabouts of how zero day happened and all that it's just completely bonkers and you have got if you're watchdog fans don't complain that the new uh, announcement for watchdog 4 has not been announced you have got to finish all of the watchdog games including the dlc and then you can petition for the next entry in the series which will be watchdog 4 rumors is it will be in japan in tokyo that's gonna be amazing um Spider-Man 2, I uh, got to finish that game. It was great, a uh, very great series. Um, I finished and played the main storyline. I did not 100% the game, but I got to finish the, the main storyline, and it was very great, and uh, look forward to to play that uh, and, and, and do all the side missions. It's a very great game. I really recommend it. It's, if you're looking for a game to get to someone someone you love, whether it's your your partner, your your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your your spouse, your your uh, kid, your teenager, one game they're looking for this holiday, they and um, you don't want too much score violence, you know, get them Spider-Man 2, it's a wonderful game. And if they don't have any of the game in the series and you're on the budget, that's fine. Get them the original Spider-Man that's been remastered. Get them Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is the second one entry in the in the series. You know, they're they're uh, they are at budget price and they're excellent entries in the series. Um Still returning to Need for Speed Unbound. Um, you know, that's one of the things that's driven me bananas is that uh, I've been working so damn hard for so many years. You know, I've worked for 25 years. I've worked with 12 years corporate. Um, I have my college education. I have all of my degrees. I have my certificates, and I just cannot seem to afford a new vehicle. Meanwhile, I see all these damn, you know, teenagers who can afford a brand new street car, street racing car, and you kind of wonder where that money comes from. So at the very least, uh, it's nice to jump in the Need for Speed. Um, I've been wanting to win that contest ever since the first one that was announced a long time ago. There was a Need for Speed contest, and uh, if you had won the contest, you would have won a BMW M3. <coughs> I really thought I would have won that contest, but I don't know if I did. I guess for the moment I did not, and it was my dream to own that car or a similar vehicle. And uh, just to play Need for Speed and to see them inspired by some of the work that I've done with uh, some of my avatars and um, kind of a more initial D aspect to the Need for Speed series with Unbound, really kind of a cartoonish. And it's very fun to see that game. There's a lot of volumes. There's a uh, volume one, two, three, four, five, and just continuation. And uh, honestly, I don't give a shit about the BMW M2. I'm uh, very looking forward to the next entry in the series. That will be Need for Speed. Um, um, most Wanted, featuring the BMW M3. Very much looking forward to the next continuation in the Need for Speed series. So I better hurry up and uh, finish Need for Speed Unbound. Um, Got to return to Advanced Wars on the Switch. I uh, stopped that mission 9. That uh, mission got very complicated, very tiresome. But um, it's a it's a one-hour mission. And if you make a single wrong move, you have to start all over. So I'm eager to, uh, to get back to that and... Uh, really work on that and uh, get that done. I'm, I'm very much eager to work on this. Uh, Batman series, I'm in Batman Arkham City, which is the second one in the entry. Uh, a lot of things going on. Um, I think I'm at a point where Catwoman is in trouble and Catwoman's in trouble, so I have to hold, go in there and save her. And uh, you, people who know me know how I feel about Catwoman. You know, I love Batman, but uh, you know, if I was Batman and I was making all these billions of dollars and someone would show up and just to seduce me and just have a little nuki just to steal all my money I would be pretty upset so yeah that's, that's bad man I'll go ahead and save Catwoman but uh, really frustrating when she just shows up and just uh, you know see this is used for your money that's uh, very annoying um, let's see uh, Full Mill Panic very tough game very hard to get this copy, almost impossible to get this game. It's uh, Who Dares Win for the PS4 with English subtitles. Um, I'm on mission 20, that's Alpha and the Omega. That's the mission where the final boss is Sabina. Sabina is a pain in the ass. She's very strong, I don't know how to beat her. You have to get very close to her and as soon as you do, you lose all your health. Um, I basically do not know how to complete that mission. I have to look at walkthroughs, I'm trying my best. Uh, as you know, I have to beat this this mission and continue the, the, the game because the 
the Full Metal Panic series ended on Invisible, Invisible Win or Invisible, uh, Invisible something, which was the, you know, the last entry in the in the DVD series, uh, Invisible Victory, and um, since uh, that ended. Well, if you want to know what happens after that, you need to play the game uh, for PS4, which is the Full Metal Panic, Who Dares Wins. And you see what happens after that. You see a lot of uh, a lot of revelations, a lot of plot twists. You know, you hear more about um, the bad guys, Myth uh, Amalgam, and the good guys, Mithril, and you hear some crazy developments and just bananas, and you want to hear more, so you have to keep playing the game. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, since... Uh, since we haven't heard uh, more entries into that series, thankfully there's a it was part of the campaign for uh, the petition to have a, a sequel to that, and um, a sequel is set 25 years after Full Metal Panic will take place. Um, we, it's been issued in some kind of magazine, but uh, I don't know if it's on a book yet. I've been haunting every book places to uh, to have this book, and it's, it's not out yet, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, um, as always, I'm accepting donation for a new vehicle. Uh, I told everyone uh, my vehicle is uh, very old. It's an old sedan, and uh, I'm trying to get. I would like to buy this by Christmas. It would really help me out if you can make a small donation, as from uh, even as little as one dollar or five dollar donation to my GoFundMe. It doesn't seem like much, but if uh, about twelve thousand people made a five dollar do donation, that would give me close to sixty grand, and that's near seventy grand, which is enough for me to buy an Audi A7, which is a very good uh, German engineering vehicle. It has, um, it's a uh, full size, so I'm, I'm very tall, I can fit in it. It has a large uh, infotainment, so I can be able to listen and review all my Jedi radios and all my other podcasts and episodes, which I really need to do while I'm on the road and uh, just need to, to review all that information. And uh, yeah. Uh, like I said, uh, help me out um, if you enjoy the podcast, if you enjoy the blog. Like I said, I've been writing for eight years. Uh, help me, help me. Uh, if you like what you hear, invest in me, and that would be very much appreciative. Um, as you know, I, I put uh, my Jellag Radio episodes on Deezer app, which is similar to Spotify. Uh, they're just kind of uh, different orders. They're not in the complete normal orders in, and they're in random order over there so I have to put them in an order that's going to take some long time and they're also available on Apple Music I don't know if all of them are available on, on I'm sorry on Amazon Music I try to put them on Apple Music the transfer didn't work correctly so I'll try to figure that out I, I have to keep trying I'm really excited because in two days the Game Awards 2023 will be on YouTube on uh, Thursday December 7th and 4 p.m. Pacific time I cannot wait for the Death Stranding 2 trailer. Everyone is waiting for this trailer. It's going to be bananas. It's going to be bonkers. And um, it's going to be scary. We're going to see the new antagonist. Uh, they might show his face. Uh, uh, we know that Keanu Reeves might be involved into this franchise. So he might be the bad guy. It's going to be a crazy game. It's, uh, it's going to be very hard to play this. And like I said, we have to wait at least a whole other year or two until the game is, is uh, released. Um, so we have a long wait uh, for this to be coming out. Um, there's a new Grand Theft Auto Six trailer, uh, uh, an hour and um, a minute and thirty some seconds, and unfortunately, um, that game doesn't get released until twenty twenty five. So that's far away. We can don't have to think too much about that. We'll have to go back to that when that comes out. Then there's a long wait to, until that shows up. Um, told you guys I was gonna get make the list for the book club for the month of December, twenty twenty three. So here it is. Uh, nuclear fusion, the breakthrough that could change the world, the future of clean energy. Awesome facts you need to know. So as you know, nuclear fusion was uh, someone figured out the algorithm. And uh, how did they figure out the algorithm? Well, as funny as it sounds, uh, you know, a lot of scientists, basically researchers, were looking at my podcast, July Radio, and all of them, and my writings. And uh, they basically reverse engineered out of it, you know, nuclear fusion. You know, they just kept writing at the code and say, what the fuck is this guy working on? And they started making, start putting things together, start putting things upside down, start putting things uh, in the mirror, in the writing them backward, upside down, whatever. And they came up with uh, the um, formula for nuclear fusion. So I'm very excited about that. And uh, as you know, this technology is very strong, very powerful. And um, 
I'm very excited to be part of that and look forward to uh, sharing some of uh, that knowledge when um, with adding with the raising awareness about nuclear fusion and it's on the book club. You know, you guys can start to read a little bit about it and, and see how amazing this sort of technology is. It's it's very powerful. It's worth a lot and uh, this can save humanity. This nuclear fusion can really save the world and you know, it's pretty much energy for clean energy forever for everyone on the world. It can, can help everybody. Got a few more books on the on the book club. Uh, obviously, uh, Terminal List, uh, book number two from Jack Carr. If you've seen Terminal List on on Amazon Prime Video, uh, season two has not been announced. But uh, uh, if you've been watching season one, this is the second book in the series. So be sure to watch that, and be sure to read that very good uh, book series. Uh, very much adore. Um, next is GTO Paradise Lost, uh, volume three and four. As you know, if you've read the original. GTO Great Teacher on Nizuka Manga. This is the this is a different series, just called Paradise Lost. So this is Volume Three and Four. I also included two books by Rachel Maddow. And Rachel Maddow has been really, you know, screaming at the top of her lungs on her TV show, and basically took a break from her TV show because no one was paying attention. And uh, she is she's been really uh, trying to warn everybody about Trump. No one was listening. So I'm sorry, guys, but uh, she warned us. He told you to take the warning seriously. No one been able to put in Trump in handcuffs. You know, everyone is at fault for not listening to what she said. She said, you know, it's it's going to be a raise of, uh, you know, basically America is going to turn to fascism if we don't arrest Trump. And no one paid attention. And now, you know, everyone's joking around about these idiots in the MAGA cult, MAGA cult and all this and that. And they never, they never arrest or stop them. They just kept on going. And now, you know, the threat of... American democracy is there. There's a big threat, you know. You know, I'm kind of sick of this shit. I don't know how else to explain to you guys that, you know, Fox News is not a legitimate news organization. You need to watch MSNBC or CNN or, I'm sorry, even those guys are kind of like, it's just a, you know, they're just not really talking about what's really happening. So that you kind of have to turn on to English news, you know, which is BBC News. And then what happened with BBC News? They don't tell the whole story about um, what's going on in Israel-Palestine. So now you have to turn on to Al Jazeera, which, you know, if you don't like those guys, well then watch, if you guys don't speak French, uh, go ahead and watch France 24, which is uh, French 24. You know, they have an English station. Maybe you can watch that one. Watch it in English. You know, I'm sorry, but the the news organization are the very bad right now. They just, all they're doing is just stroking Trump for nonstop for ratings and all this and that and it's just for them it's just a money maker and they just don't even care about American democracy. American democracy is about to fall at the hands of Trump and his cronies for another for another four years. And nobody seems to care. You know, what more do you want to do? You know, do you really want to go through this hellhole? You really expect me to stay up late and write my reports at night, you know, while you know, the Trump administration, the next Trump administration is not going to know what the fuck they're doing. And like, there's no one in, there's this, there's no staff at the State Department. There's like only one or two guys that are working. Can you really afford that in this, in this political climate? Can you imagine if Blinken, Secretary Blinken, for the next administration would have only two or three guys working for himself in this freaking climate, with everything that's going on in Ukraine, everything that's going on in Israel-Palestine. Can you imagine that shit? Uh, that will scare you? Okay, well, make sure you vote for a Democrat in 2024. Make sure you read um, Rachel Maddow's books. Make sure you start volunteering. You know, I finally found the guys in Central Valley, California, who do volunteering for the Democratic Party. They're on a Zoom call weekly or monthly. I'm jumping on the next one. I'm introducing myself. I'm like, yo, what are you guys doing? I'm... Uh, I'm I'm very I have a busy schedule, but uh, I'm uh, I will be, you know. Obviously, I'm I'm not a politician, so I don't need to shake hands and kiss babies. But I'm just going to be present and just, you know, raising awareness in my neck of the woods and just say, hey, all of those MAGA people or people that are vote for Trump, we're going to deprogram them and just expand them. We really need a Democrat in office, or else you know America will fall into shambles. Um. Other few more books on the book club I have. Um, let's see. I thought I'd include some comic books, so here's another comic book I haven't included in a while. The Batman Superman 
World's Finest uh, series from 2022. This is volume number 12. Uh, be sure to read that comic book edition. And um, let's see, I'm also adding the two, um, which we call the Harvard Business Review, Emotional Intelligence, Authentic Leadership and Influence Plus Persuasion. I said I would include those. Uh, be sure to pick them up. And uh, that's one of the books I used to, the series I used to read when I was at the office and i um, going to keep reading the next continuation, I guess. Um, other book that I have on the series, on the, on this book club is uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, The Origin, The Origin, because, you know, as much as I love and talk about Full Metal Panic, I know that a lot of my fans and supporters were basically keeping their lips sealed and basically said, yo, Zach, you, Zach, you really, you love these goddamn big mecha stories and stuff. And, uh, you know, your full mill panic is taking forever. It's taking a whole generation for the sequel. Look, just join us over here and start reading about Gundam. There's like 30 years worth of history of Gundam. There's, there's like dozens and dozens of anime series. There's lots and lots of books and mangas. And uh, there's even games and uh, it's going to be a Netflix series, very exciting, and um, that's what it's all about, you know. I love these Mecha Warriors series and all that, and, uh, you know, you know, I'm, uh, you know, this is it. This is, this is the, this is the Holy Bible of, of Mecha Warrior, um, you know, entry. You see, this, this is, this is, this is the beginning, so I'm very eager to start reading about all this, and uh, very excited. I heard a lot about them, and uh, it's time to get started. And I want everyone in, who reads me, who follows me, who, who reads the blog to join me on this journey. Um, there's also going to be the Hoodie Key Magazine, Volume 9. This is the magazine about watches. As you know, uh, I, um, I love this magazine about watches because um, I love my uh, Seiko Japan watch, the watch that I like to wear, especially when I play my... Metal Gear Solid series, especially number five. And um, yeah, that's, uh, as you know, a Big Boss was wearing a, a Psycho Japan watch, so very exciting. Um, let's see, I watch a couple TV shows, and the next, <coughs> excuse me, let me drink a little bit of water. Uh, the next TV series I'm about to watch is Monarch. On uh, Apple Plus, uh, TV Plus, this is about uh, Godzilla and King Kong, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited about that. Uh, there's a new uh, Godzilla movie on theaters, Godzilla minus one, so I'll try to watch that or see it when it's on the streaming. And um, yeah, very excited about Monarch. Uh, I love Godzilla series; it's gonna be amazing. Uh, I see a lot of people on Apple are watching Chuck. Very excited for that. Chuck is an amazing TV series. I love the show and. Uh, you know, I hope that raises awareness because uh, um, Zachary Levi really needs is some help. He's been trying to green light uh, the movie. I've already read his book. I think it was in my book club last year. And um, uh, the announcement for a reboot or a sequel. We'll see what happens. We're very much excited for uh, for Chuck movie or Chuck reboot. Um, just people who love the series. And uh, uh, I know that everyone is... Uh, Eager to see some of these characters again. I just love them all. Whether it's Chuck, um, his best friend Morgan, uh, the uh, um, the is is to you know Walker, who's the one following him, and uh, the other Garde du Corps, whatever you call that in English, uh, who's there to uh, who f who helps him out and. Uh, it's just an amazing series, and hopefully we get uh, we get a sequel or a movie or a reboot. You know, let's make that happen. It would make a lot of people very excited. We just, you know, everybody needs Chuck. You know, we just we need the guy. And you know, after everything that went on with him, he had a, a very a hard ship with the mental health last year. I know how that is. He was also dealing with uh, with uh, suicide prevention and all things in that. So. We really need to give him a gift, to give him a present, and give him that uh, Chuck movie, Chuck reboot, Chuck sequel, whatever he wants. We need to make that happen. It would make all of the fans very, very happy. 
including myself. Uh, no new announcements since on the X Files reboot. Uh, they've been working on it, and um, we need to we need to know what's going to happen with that. Uh, the book, um, the truth is still out there. Thirty years of the X Files is on my book club. Uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of X Files since the very beginning. You know, I'm sure in an alternate universe, I am in the basement of the FBI trying to sort things out and uh, trying to figure out what the hell's going on. I'm, and um, all the other conspiracy stories or whatever's happening with the forces who are making their lives difficult. And that's what it feels like now. You know, right now, the FBI is really working hard. You know, Jack Smith is trying to put Trump's behind bar, but something that seems to get in the way. What is it? What is getting into Jack Smith's way that uh, this political circus is going on? And we know what it is. After a little bit of uh, investigating report, we know that there are very strong people within the military or intelligence community. There's about 17 of them, or 18 of them, and there's one of them that is still very pro-Trump. And they're very high up, and they really are delaying this Trump-Russia uh, investigation. And, they're, or, uh, and the FBI, is uh, the director, is really trying hard to, to deal with these assholes who are preventing them from making this case closed. And there's, until we find who the hell is on the DIA, who's, you know, look at these databases, who are these agents who are still pro-Trump? They're DIA agents who are pro-Trump and are hindering on the investigation. They're hindering on putting Trump finally behind bars, being in handcuffs. We're talking people who are jeopardizing the U.S. democracy and using the excuse of national security, national security. Well, Trump is a national security risk. He tried to get access to the nuclear codes. And what is he trying to do with those codes? You know, it's very dangerous. What if Trump uses the nuclear codes to launch a strike against Iran? Well, what the hell does that do? Immediately, you know, Israel would go crazy and, you know, the other guys would go crazy and the whole Arab world would be even more upset. And then it would... Be a fucking sum of all fear situation. What is what Trump is doing? He's doing a sum of all fear situation. He's trying to, you know, who the fuck keeps nuclear codes inside the fucking bathroom? Nobody does that. Let's be honest. Trump has special preferential treatment because he's a former U.S. president and because he's a old white man. If he was brown, he'd be already at Guantanamo Bay, but he's not. This is bullshit. We need to put Trump in handcuffs, you know, in Alcatraz or some shit. That's where he really belongs. I'm, I'm sick of this shit. You know, we need the we need the director Ray to to just Christopher to fucking find these DIA assholes who are still on payroll and support Trump behind behind closed doors. And we need to arrest them and say fuck your bullshit. Trump is over. Jack Smith needs to come in there and deal with this shit. Just imagine some type of Mulder type figure who's been at the bureau who's working while you sleep. Imagine all of the FBI agents who work during the day and imagine there's still one guy at night by himself in the basement just working furiously trying to get this shit done, trying to find a way to end Trump once and for all because America is under very, you know, it's uh, the hour is grim, you know, and he can trust nobody. This Mulder character cannot trust anybody except for Scully. You know, there's only... One person that he can trust in the whole bureau is was one woman, and then Skinner, which is the, you know, the, the higher up at the the bureau. So, you know, there's that's why we have uh, that's why we love the X Files series, and we look forward to the the reboot or maybe another movie. Or I know that uh, Gillian Anderson sometimes does not like to work with uh, David Duchovny for whatever reason, but sometimes they do. They no matter what they even if they have a a hate relationship, it's, it's a love-hate relationship, and I'm sure they'll work, to work together again, and we'll see some kind of um, continuation to that series. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I think that's pretty much um, all I have uh, for this uh, for this update. As you know, uh, please continue to read your uh, The Economist uh, uh, magazine. That is your... That is your Bible. That is your. That is what helps you. What's going on in, this, in the world to make sense of all this? Um, I have no other way to say it. You know, I'm sorry, but everything else you read is pretty much on the 
on a fifth grade level, you know, it's just you want to read something and stay educated, you need to read The Economist. That's 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 where that's where people that's where people who have uh, who are highly educated, that's what they read to know what the hell's going on on a weekly basis and the Howard is grim, you know. Everything is very wrong in Israel Palestine. A lot of people are dead. Over twenty thousand Palestinians have died in just a matter of a month. It's a genocide. Um, Netanyahu is currently facing uh, corruption charges at the ICC or a similar court, and uh, you know he's uh, he's basically the biggest mafia individual in the whole goddamn world. Netanyahu is now worse than the entire Italian mafia. That's how bad Netanyahu is right now. He's, he is so strong, people around the world is basically, we basically have the entire planet pointed at Netanyahu to try to stop this guy, and he still managed to get out of his situation. That's how, you know, we don't know how strong he is, and that's why I made the, the correlation. You know, you had trouble with the metaphors trying to explain who he is, and who is Netanyahu? Netanyahu is, his name is Bibi Netanyahu. What does that sound like? That sounds like BBD. Or Babi D. Netanyahu from Dragon Ball Z. He sounds like he's the goddamn evil sorcerer that is out there destroying and, and killing and destroying people, you know, burning babies and toddlers. And uh, no one seems to put their foot down and say something. I mean, you need to understand that the State Department, President Biden, Vice President Harris, for the longest time, for a couple of weeks, were smiling in pictures with him, photo ops. And it really took, you know, it really took some uh, gravitas, as uh, Stephen Colbert liked to say. Hope you feel better, buddy. And uh, to just say, you know, God damn it, are you, are you seeing what's happening on the ground? You know, do you guys just don't give a shit because they're not white people that are dying over there? I mean, you need to understand that there's all these Palestinians that are being killed on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, if you kill a thousand Palestinian children in one day, that's... That's going to raise some eyebrows. So I'm a little upset, you know. This, as you can see, I'm wearing my Cyberpunk shirt, and uh, ever since the DLC just came out, I just was so getting excited. You know, I'm trying to play the game in in French now, and it's uh, awesome audio, and I couldn't wait to get that done because my next step is to finally play the game the way I wanted to play it, which is in Japanese audio with English subtitles or French subtitles, and I just I can't wait. I'm a, I cannot wait to do that. You can't even do it on the on the PlayStation. You have to do it on the PC for some reason. Those language pack have not been released on the on the on the uh, console. So hopefully for uh, version uh, two point two or two point three, they'll release those language packs for the PlayStation and uh, and for the uh, Xbox. Okay, guys, uh, I think I've I've spoken enough for this um, update, and uh, just wanted to say. It's uh, the beginning of December. There's still a lot more days this month. Uh, we'll we'll delve into more details, more updates, and uh, like I said, just uh, enjoy yourself now. As you, it's going to be the about to be the Christmas holidays. Um, stay warm, and um, if you're if you're looking at your uh, thermostat, just please don't set it too high because don't break the thermostat. That's uh, that's the worrisome of, uh, of every father into every household. You know, do not break that thermostat. <laughs> heat, heat, uh, the heater might break. You know. Anyway, uh, I love you guys. Hope you enjoy this update. And uh, as you know, everything is always on the website. Zach.coffee, Z-A-C-K dot coffee, C-O-F-F-E-E. -E. All the podcasts are on July Radio, on Spotify, and all the other podcasts um, available uh, on the on the blog and uh, on the short link uh, La Frenzy L E F R E N Z Y dot C O. Um, follow me on Twitter at I am Zachy. Follow me on Instagram at I am Zachy or Z Zach dot company. Uh, and then um, for the Frenchies uh, Zachy dot Langage. That's uh, L A N G A. G E. There's no U because in French it's long guys, not language. So, like I said, on Instagram it's I am Zachy, Zach dot company and Zach dot langage, and on and on Twitter it's uh, I am Zachy, I am Z A K I. Okay, guys, that's enough talking for now. 
Enjoy yourselves in Cyberpunk, and I'm sure I'll catch you up on the flip side. Until next time, ciao.